great. The um, special board meeting of, of 22 February, uh, special board selection meeting, uh, board selection meeting. Like your purposes, we call the order at 3.31. We'll start with number one, or number two, public comment on agenda items. Anyone in the public that cares to comment on any of the uh, budget items we'll talk about today? Okay, thank you. Uh, hearing that, we'll move right to the number three, our budget discussions, including the following, but not limited to our park and rec and uh, red shore voters. Park and rec, you're first. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make some opening comments and then I'm going to let Matt lead us through our presentation. Um, <clears throat> as you know, we tried this to get a recreational leader position put in uh, place, uh, and the commission has. Uh, Thought about it, and we are basically trying again. The commission is 100 percent behind the, uh, this uh, the North of us thing. Uh, <clears throat> it's something that we feel is is necessary to the health of uh, parks and recreation. For Kent. And um, I think our presentation will show that. And we're looking at this as a step that needs to be taken, um, which will enable, uh, we want you to look at the big picture of things. It will enable us to address. Issues that have not been addressed um, for a, quite a long time, and the ultimate health will be increased revenues and uh, certainly uh, an, an increase in our ability to pursue grants and things like that. So, um, I would like to let Matt take over. Uh, but I, you know, I just want to emphasize that the commission is 100% endorses this. Um, we would hopefully like to see the town be able to vote on this. Hopefully, it will, it will go through to that point um, and get to a town here. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Matt? All right. Um, do you have preference of where I present from or? Uh, we can, I, I'm okay with, if you're comfortable there watching the screen, that's fine. Uh, sure. Do we, do we, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stand more up here so I can see both, so I can talk in multiple different directions. So my name is Matt. I am the new Park and Recreation Director here in town. I started last week on Monday and I jumped right into the budgeting process and I am super excited about that because it gives an opportunity for me to see what is happening here in town at more of a financial standpoint, but also from a growth standpoint to see exactly what we can do here. So the commission and I work together to come up with this presentation to present to you today what our proposal is with this full-time recreation lead position and really give some backstory as to what's going on with our parks. So, and with our recreation programming as well. So parks and recreation, the department itself is a combination of two items. It's two pillars. You have the recreation pillar and the parks pillar. So Lynn, if you don't mind getting to the next slide. Thank you. Recreation. The pillar of recreation has grown significantly in the past few years. And the state of recreation here in Kent today, we're winning. It's awesome. We're doing a great job. There's a lot that's going on. My predecessor, Jared, did a great job with creating new programs since 2020 with new implementations, new ideas, and great concepts. He did a great job reaching out to the Kent School and securing a great connection with them for Learn to Swim, having open lap swim, and then also having the aqua aerobics class. Additionally, we've increased the amount of senior programming that we have. We have senior bingo, senior bunko, and senior, uh, senior rubbing up. And then we have a 
bountiful amount of other programs. In addition to that, we resurrected a lot of programs that happened before 2017. These programs like Learn to Skate, this past weekend, we had 27 participants at Learn to Skate uh, or Free Skate that transitioned from Learn to Skate to stay around. That's fantastic. That's a huge number. Our Easter event, the um, extravaganza that Jeremy planned last year, something that I'm currently planning. And it's a huge program here in town seeing over 100 children last year participate. That's such a large number. And to really engage with the population to bring them out, it's something that's unique to this area. To really say, hey, we're here in Kent. We're providing these awesome opportunities. Come on out to them. And seeing that number increase every time, that's a great thing to see. And then even maintaining some of the current programs that we have with soccer, with basketball, some of yes. These are great programs that are staple here in Kent, and we'd love to see continue happening. Let me try and that <laughs> So with the growth of recreation here in Kent, and with some things that have happened with COVID and a lot of change on the commission and in the department with the department director, some things that were not necessarily exigent at the moment compared to staffing needs or a program that's taking place and we can't cancel it because it's an opportunity for the community. Those things were put to the wayside and <clears throat> things unfortunately were in our parks. So our parks have been neglected for a little too long. Our ball fields need a lot of tender loving care. There's a lot of dismantle to it. The grass is not doing well and we're working on a plan to revitalize that. Emory Park, the plan with Emory Park, it has been in the works for quite some time. And then, Lynn, if you don't have mind hitting the next slide. There was the um, request for a plan back in 2018, but then when COVID hit, some things went to the wayside and things weren't picked up. Um, there was a lot of turnover. So in the past six years, this is a snapshot of it. We've had a lot of turnover. We had, new, we had Leslie Ferris, the former director, retire. Then we had a new interim director step in for a little bit and she retired and, or she resigned in the fall of 2021. Then Jared was hired and he did a great job increasing programs, but for him to increase programs and to focus on the parks, that in tandem was a significant amount of work for him to do. And he wasn't able to successfully do both without having the support that he needed from the team and having the staff there to support him. In addition to that, uh, the commission has done a great job with investigating and working with Jared and past directors on seeing what we could do to implement better strategies with growth for recreation programs and to really hone in on our parks and really vitalize our parks to create great programming spaces. And um, unfortunately, last year when Jared proposed the lead rep position, it did not get passed by the town and it was identified by the commission and by Jared that it would be a very significant part of the department to help with the growth of the department as well as maintaining the department. Um, and if you don't mind hitting the next slide, please. So the current structure of the Park and Recreation Department is the Park and Rec Director, who is the full-time person for the department, reports to two entities, essentially, the as reporting bodies, the Board of Selectmen and the Commission. This person also reports to the public. And then this person has direct reports, which is all nine of the currently uh, all eight of the currently listed part-time roles, and then contractors, which here we wrote a screen for park maintenance because we do contract out for park maintenance at the moment. We have Ed Matson who does some park work, and we also have another company that comes out and takes care of the lawn at the Kent Center School. Um, in addition to that, the duties that are set up with this job are significantly long as a director. This person is stepping in and doing the work of frontline management, doing the work of frontline employees, but also tasked with doing the directorial work, which is more middle and executive level. And in addition to that, tasked with the high thinking and the high problem solving requirements and requests from the commission, board of selectmen, and the public. And those demands can't necessarily be met because they have to be put to the wayside because the frontline stuff has to be handled and managed first and immediately. So with having the frontline management with programs growing so robustly and being so robust here in town, it creates a bit of a difficulty for anybody in this role to step in and say, I can handle frontline management while also doing the critical thinking and also the high level and high end things that are required of me when it comes to strategizing and proposing for grants or coordinating with the board selectmen and the commission to tackle a new problem or a new project that we have in mind. Uh, next slide, please. 
So the current budget on the past slide was $35,000 of what we currently operate on with our part-time staff. We're asking for an increase to $58,000 uh, a little bit more than $58,000. And the reason why we're asking for this is for an increase for the full-time rec leader role. Now, the recreation leader in this position is going to be working in that part of the department that focuses on recreation. They're gonna be working directly with the recreation aides. They're gonna be our after-school care director, our camp director. They're gonna have the ASP aides, camp camp aides, and sports camp aides directly report to this person and they can jump in and sub in whenever they call out or if there's a need for them to jump in in a different program area. In addition to that, this will also give us the strategy to implement some more advertising in the community when it comes to programs and to what's happening in the, the uh, town itself. So the one thing that I've identified is a different way to strategize and communicate our current programs here in Kent, and that's something I'm working with on right now, and I'll be proposing to the commission within the next month to discuss what we're going to be doing to really enhance our communication of these programs. And that having an added communication aspect to it is asking for another level and layer of responsibility. So communication is so essential when it comes to part programming. If we want to communicate effectively to get people to our programs, to increase our revenue, to help fund the department and fund the general fund, we need to communicate better. And having someone who can step in and communicate better will definitely enhance that. In addition to that, um, this will allow for more program development and more activity development here in town. This will allow for things such as senior trips. This will allow for things such as travel for kids to go to different locations and having someone who's full-time that can step in, who's trusted to be able to do this. Someone who might be a volunteer stepping into this role, the quality of work won't necessarily be as comparable as somebody who is paid for that for a living, but also the expense of this person calling out and saying, I can't do this today anymore, I had something else come up, and tossing the volunteer role to the side and saying, I had something else that's a little more important to me come up, is more of a prevalent state than not. I worked for the Ys and seeing that a lot of people were engaged and wanted to volunteer and happy to volunteer at the Y, they were at the disposal of what they could do. So a volunteer saying that they're not getting paid for this, it's a low risk for them to accept. And if they feel that they can toss out that low risk task to go attack something else and tackle something else on their agenda, they might do that. But if it's a paid position and it's something that they're paid to do, having that high risk as a financial contribution to themselves, something that might sustain them, something that might pay for their living, this would leave that person in that position to say, I can't back out, I'm here to do this. I want to do this to grow the program and support myself and solve this problem. And additionally, this role, oh, no, right. thank you. No, that's great. You can go back to the next slide. Sorry about that. No, that's great. You can go over to the next slide. So that's perfect. Thank you. So having this person here will also allow for a new focus on parks. So it opens up more time for the director to not only just do the high level critical thinking, but also to strategize for the parks, revitalize those spaces and create programming spaces that are more inviting and can do more. It also allows us to tackle this in the capital budget and plan more effectively when it comes to things with that. Uh, we can go ahead and look at every park and go explore the pool more. We can go in depth with that more. We can go ahead and tap into some of this capital funding that might not have been used in the past that is currently on the list for park and rec and finally make decisions on those things and have a park and rec director who isn't jumping into the programs and can focus on exactly what those needs are and can produce stuff at a high quality opposed to something that they're quickly sitting down at their desk for to do within 10 minutes because they have 10 minutes left of what they could do and in their capacity and in their bandwidth. Now the responsibilities are divvied up in a way that reflect that this person is doing a frontline management role and also doing something in a leadership capacity. So the structure of this is to reflect something of that. And I love using schools as an example, or why is this an example, uh, private school specifically. You have your commission, or you have your board, or you have your board of trustees, and that board and their chair report directly to an executive director or head of school. In this style, you have the commission of park and recreation with their chair who report, who in tandem works with the Park and Rec Director who reports directly to the board. Similar to the Y, the Executive Director reports to the Board of Directors and the Chair of the Board. The board tasks the Park and Rec Director or Executive Director, whomever it is in that style, with tasks of high-level critical thinking and goals. Those goals can be delegated out to the rest of the team. However, some of those goals are going to require a higher level of Nasty, a higher level of thought process and a higher level, level of energy when it comes to focusing on those things. 
if that person in that role can't focus on those high level, high priority tasks because they're doing the frontline management work, they're not gonna be able to successfully do that. In addition to that, having this recreation lead tasks the director to give a task to the manager to achieve some goals. So those goals might be having more people attend park and recreation events here in town. It might be advertising to seniors and getting more senior programming going, such as the trips to uh, different locations. It might be getting them to see the uh, certified to drive the van that's at the school so they can go ahead and jump in the van and take 14 seniors out to somewhere here in Connecticut that can do a great walk on the Silver Sands down to Milford. They might want to do a beach day and they can go ahead down to Silver Sands and go enjoy the beach. This also allows for the opportunity for someone to directly oversee Camp Cat. So having someone who has experience and steps into the role into the camp camp, this allows for growth opportunity. This allows for a stronger relationship with Club Getaway. Club Getaway itself is a resort and we're using their property, which is absolutely fantastic that we have that relationship and they're letting us do that. Having the director that's here full time can plan that stuff out successfully in the future and can also get people to attend the camp. Right now, camp is not up on the registration website. We're still in the planning processes. A lot of places have already put camp up. Traditionally, camp usually goes up in early January to early February for registration. And we're behind the eight ball on that. And I want to jump on the eight ball and get ahead of it and see what we can do for camp and get people here. But if we have someone who's in the recreation lead position, they can start working on this. And this can be outlined and this can be advertised and opened up in January and they can start planning for camp. They know how many staff they're going to have. There's that advanced planning that can be successful for the department to meet goals, especially revenue goals. So it is a $58,000 um, request that we're having for salaries. But the way that I look at it as this is a current ask for the salary. If we increase the amount of programming and have this person introduce programs, host programs, facilitate programs, which facilitate revenue, this will then bring money back into the general fund. So next slide, please, Lynn. So looking at what the proposed model is versus the current model based on fiscal year 23 finances, this is where we're currently at with the ask. It's going to be um, below revenue because we are able to sustain the proposed model with what was the um, actual revenue 22-23. Having this position in the, having it currently and asking for a large increase, which I believe is about um, a 17% increase of what we're asking. And that's, that is a huge jump. I get it. I understand. But it's a current ask with them introducing new programs, having new things take place, having new things tackled here in town and having that revenue generated still at a low cost so people can attend those programs. It'll be brought back into the general fund. And Lynn, if you don't mind, the next slide, please. We've been able to successfully offset 30% of our budget. This could This number can increase within not just a year's time, but a five-year time. If we outline a plan and we can go ahead and successfully plan out what programs we want to introduce with fee structures, we can then go ahead and say this might offset 70 to 80% of the budget within five years, even more. And that could be successful to help out with the general fund. That could be helpful to funding our department to really show that we have a more true ask of what we're looking for when it comes to expenses versus revenue. And then in turn, having this return to the general fund and more departments ask every year, this will help impact the mill rate and reduce the mill rate on our end so we're not being a direct impact on the mill rate for an increase. So that is the thought process behind this when we came together and really looked at what we have going on for our department and what we want to see not only here in Kent as a growth opportunity, but also for the financial end of it for the clients who be funded in our parks and fall programs. Thank you. Yeah, why do you think you're you're a revenue generating organization? Why do you think that's your main purpose? You've repeated that 27 times. You said revenue generating. I counted it. Yeah. Why is that? So revenue generating. The reason why I feel that this is a revenue generating organization and why um, Park Rec could be a strong revenue work of generating organization, we have to put the right things in play. And if we go ahead and start going at at cost versus um, what we're asking, what we ask people for for programs, or netting out of having a zero zeroing out the program based on the minimal, minimum amount of participation. So let's say I'm going to use lifeguarding as an example, because I love using lifeguarding as an example. It's a great program itself, but it costs a lot. So let's say that we have a lifeguard instructor teaching a lifeguarding course. They're paid $20 an hour, and it's a 20-hour course that's $400. 
we need at least three people to run the course based on Red Cross standard. So therefore, if this person runs the class with a minimum of three people, they're gonna, and we charge a certain amount, we have to net out at zero. What could we charge at a low rate in order to have this class run and generate some revenue off of that? Uh, one thing that is average in the area is about $400 per in course. So if the instructor is charging $400 to teach class, and we're charging three people $400 each, this is going to be an $800 revenue, revenue generating opportunity. That's just a set example. With Park and Rec, if we implement programs and we- Can, can I help you say, we don't, do, we don't do Red Cross instruction right now, haven't been yeah. for a couple of years. So could you use a, an example that actually we do in town here? Sure. So Camp Cat. Camp Cat is a great thing. Let me ask about that. Why are we, why are we trying to resurrect and change and, and differentiate what we can already get out of Pub Getaway? And what is the difference? You describe basically what the recreational summer camp A does that you are now the rec lead to do. So what happens to that rec A? So we have yeah. yeah, from Cove Getaway who, you know, has been conducting Camp Kent. Yeah. Why are you looking more to, you know, actually benefit from the organization of Club Getaway that's already in place with the, with the trained staff and, and utilize that as your club instead of trying to resurrect, uh, you know, another rec lead and, and someone else to run that. Because obviously on a rec aid over there to oversee the kids at the time. But, you know, it's where you get on. Let me ask you, Matt. Let me ask you, Matt. Let me ask Matt. He's the director. Let me ask him. He gave the presentation. We'll give everybody else a chance to talk, but I, he's asked the question. So, sure. Mm -hmm. So, respectively, with Camp Ken. We have to have a camp director that facilitates all the camp programming that's on site with the kids. In addition to that, we need the rec aides to do more of an offset when it comes to the um, required amount of staff to children ratio. So we like to run at a one to 12 ratio, having one staff member to 12 kids as a maximum. That's a recommendation by the OEC. We're not an OEC licensed camp. And I just want to make that clear about OEC licensed camp. Uh, OEC is an awesome early childhood. The reason why it's more municipality and it's not required for a municipality to be an office of early childhood required camp. Now, on that exact note right there, because that's an important piece, when it comes to Club Cataway, they are a resort. So I Ruth and I met with them this morning to talk about camp for the summer, and they expressed to us that they are a resort. They're not a licensed camp. If they were to take on Camp Kent, they would have to get OEC licensing, and that is something that is currently not of their interest. Um, it's a lot of red tape. It's a lot of things they would have to go through. When I was a camp director for the Y, it's a lot of things that you have to know. There's a very large policy manual and you have to abide by those policies and you have to make sure those policies, you're dotting your I's and crossing your T's with it because children's safety is so important with licensing and that licensing is specific for private entities and nonprofits to ensure that these are being done. So you know, with nonprofits and private entities, we're not too sure what they're done. They're private nonprofit entities not operating in the expense of the page of the uh, public. So. Good answer. Good answer. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. All right. How do you how have you looked at the demographics of this area to to see well, how you're projecting growth and potential of more programs? Um, when are we going to reach max saturation with programs? Sure. And we actually have numbers. I've never seen a number of how many kids actually participate in each one of your programs. That would be great to have sometime at some point. I think if you're going to go to a special public meeting. I don't have to get into necessarily, but yeah. But are you looking at I mean max participation and so on? Yep, I'm definitely exploring max participation. I've been working with Lynn and the rest of the commission on getting those numbers to make sure that they're clear. Um, I've been doing some investigatory work, looking back at physical files that we have here in our office on registrations, number of registrants to ensure that those numbers are accurate and revenue is accurate as well, to really mirror that both of those things make sense. So saturation, that is a great question. I'm happy to explore that opportunity based on the number of programs that we're looking to offer and price points for those. And the increases that might happen to those programs as well over time to ensure that we are still making a profit and also staying with what is current based on inflation rates, and then also still offering lower revenue, lower priced courses and lower priced activities, lower priced programs for all of our residents here in Kent. And then one thing that I recognize that was in that policy is that I definitely want to really investigate more with the commission is the price that we're charging non-residents of Kent and how much we can charge them to come to a program. Similar to what, and I don't want to call it a membership fee, and I want to make that clear, it's not a membership fee. Something similar to what the YSD or other private entities that have members and non-member fees when they come to programs. Coming from New Canaan, uh, at our Y, what we did is we would offer a program and there would be a surcharge, relatively about $50 for the program, upwards to $150 for a program for people to attend. So if we were able to introduce that non-resident rate, 
at a little bit higher than what we're offering our current resident rate, we will still see people from outside of town that might come here that might work in Kent, might pass through Kent to go to work, and they can drop their children off at camp, and they're willing to pay that rate, and it's not a steep, significant, high incline. So that would be one way to really generate the revenue off of that is really look at one saturation, how many people we have in the programs now, what can we do to max out, what is our maximum, what can we do to, ex to expand past that maximum, also what can we do to offer more beyond that maximum, and then also recognize how many people here in Kent are participating in programs and how many of them are non-residents of Kent, and really finalizing and firming up those answers. And now, some of the programs, there won't be a fee. Like, our, traditionally, we haven't charged seniors for the programming. So that's a cost to us without revenue. So that could happen again. Yeah, absolutely. And having those programs that don't have a cost associated with them, this these programs will start when the recreation lead steps in to take over and lead these programs, offer these programs, coordinate programs that already exist. They're going to go ahead and we're going to work together in tandem with the commission and say, you know what, we can offer this program. We're offering free programs to seniors. We might already have a volunteer running it, but we recognize the volunteer calls out and we can't get somebody else to step in to take over for this. So the rec lead can take it on. Um, it also allows that opportunity to say, you know what, we recognize that there's more opportunity for two senior programs to happen at the same time. Let's say there's a senior trip in Bunko on the same day. And let's say we can only facilitate 14 seniors to go on this trip. But we have a lot of people that come to Bunko. We want to be able to have both happen at the same time. Maybe three programs happen at the same time, four programs. We want to be able to offer multiple programs at the same time and having a lead step in who can facilitate and jump in when there's certain things that they need to do, such as a call out, or they need to facilitate a volunteer and explore to see what they're doing and make sure that they're running the program properly. They're able to do that. And it's in tandem work on that matter. This rec lead is going to work in tandem with the director. It's not always going to be at occasions. They're going to work independently in tandem, and they're going to work jointly on certain tasks as well. So it's not going to be that this person is totally independent working on their own recreation as a separate column. It's parks and recreation. It's a married department. If we're not working in tandem and working together at certain points, then we're isolating ourselves and can set ourselves up for failure. Um, again, um, you, you, you got to quit mentioning the word profit because I don't think that's the, the point of our recreation department is to generate a profit. You may collect fees to offset or to help do things, but you know, you're not expected to actually make the profit and put it in the general fund. So I, I think that's a little misplaced uh, as a part of your presentation. It's a little misleading. Um, all right, when you talk about parks, now you showed us a bunch of pictures here. I know these pictures are old. I mean, they're not correct. That, that in, in field, in the baseball field, I coached there. Um, that's, that's green. That's fully developed. That's kind of a little misleading. I don't doubt that this is part of your soccer field down at the far end. Uh, you know, one that's a little bit more, one in the bottom right corner. I don't understand what the other ones are that are. Oh, emery. 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 Okay. Yep, some of them are emery. It's not right. emery. That one is emery. That one I took two days ago. So some of those photos are more recent. Some of those photos are some of the photos that were taken by my predecessor and the condition of that location hasn't changed. So, or it's taken by John Grant, who's a member of our commission, and those photos haven't changed in reference. So that's why I did utilize those photos when it came to the descriptors as to when I say the parks are needing some work and they're not having the ten, they're not having that work done because the person that's in the role as the director has to do other things and handle things that are more exigent than the parks, which yes, park maintenance is so important, so imperative. But if it's something that's saying, oh, you know what, we'll take care of the sidewalk tomorrow because right now it's not causing injury, it's not causing harm, and it's not a risk, <clears throat> it's just unsightly, we're going to go ahead and just keep putting that off until it becomes a risk, becomes becomes a problem, and we can't have that happen. We need somebody who's going to be actively checking the parks to ensure and inspect that we're doing preventative maintenance, preventative care, scheduling those things, and making sure that all programs are still running. Are you an agronomist? I'm sorry? Are you an agronomist? Do you know what an agronomist is? Uh, I would think Francis is a soil expert who can actually go down and evaluate the condition of the, of the soil. If not, I would recommend, and I think you have, has gotten experts who come in to look at the field and actually to, to maintain those, not a park person who can look and see, you know, there's park there or not, and, and really the condition of it. I mean, that was, he sat on a park and rec advisory group at one point about the soil and all that to begin, yeah, with, with you know, playing fields and stuff and, and so on. And I don't, I don't, I know that, that it was a 25,000, I think you actually referred to it back, about the 23.8 that the board selected in 19 turned down, although they did that, uh, or the, the um, uh, 
the talented or whatever I guess overall. But um, I think that's actually you know the way to go, especially that with that playing field part because it does encompass most of your outside activities at least in the, spring, in the fall during the soccer season. I'm not sure what they do if we have baseball anymore or not. But um, and then in the baseball field, you know, it is important to the school um, and as well as the town. I would think overall. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, to actually bring someone in to do it, that really takes a lot of pressure off you. I think. I mean, that's kind of yeah contract. <laughs> and then Emory. I mean, there's been a big issue with Emory lately, anyway, about whether or not future is viable for Emory. I was like, maybe that's not we're quick to break word, but but you know exactly where we're going with it. What we're going to do with you know with the what's been happening with the, the old pool and and, so, and I know the hike. You know, you certainly probably missed it. Anybody been up and down that that hill a few times? There's a lot of good recreational activities there. So I think um, having that master plan, I didn't see you mention that, but you might have mentioned yeah. it in the writing brief about it. Through, through it wasn't about. funded. Yeah. Okay. The selectman just did, didn't want to fund it, so it didn't go anywhere. Well, it's in the... Yeah, yeah but it's, it, wasn't, it wasn't funded. You know, they, they got it, they went out to bid, got, had a development yeah. RFP, went out to bid, and then they, they couldn't go forward because they didn't have any funding. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I think just given uh, the past six years, some of your snapshots are a little misleading. Director resigned due to lack of support from town for additional resources. He told me he wanted more money. So, I mean, you know, when I interviewed him on the way out, uh, it's, it's, yeah. I think so. I mean, let's, let's be honest, he was looking for more money. He might have felt there was other issues. And I don't tell I know the reason. But, you know, he was also saying he was looking for. For larger pay fee. So, um, yeah. um, some of these I, I look at more management than, than actually uh, job uh, requirements. I uh, appreciate the, the club getaway piece. That was a good that was a good explanation. Uh, what they do is a primary relation for some municipality. Um, and, and the fifty eight seven, um, I didn't really wasn't sure about the breakdown for the rec league versus because it, it it says on, on the proposed part the rec structure it's an estimated expense for rec league plus. PT support positions, and I think it's part time folks you're talking about, right? Yes, so that's so the directly plus the four part time support positions. Or the part -time part -time. Do you want to see the breakdown? Yeah, we actually have a breakdown. That yeah. this I think it would be good to know exactly what's going on for the, you know, because salary benefits are only in the case of security. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. That's good. Um, one thing that is in Park and Rec's favor is that. The, uh, the the benefits were never removed. The expense right. for benefits right. was never true. removed. So, um, it's so still, it's, it's still it makes years. it less of an increase. So this is this is the proposal. So this is the recreation leader uh, was put in the budget at um, twenty dollars an hour, forty hours a week, is forty one six. Uh, one after school program recreation aid, um, and then camp camp two recreation aids. Based, you know, as yeah, right. Matt said, mm -hmm. they need them for the. Um, and then the sports camp uh, for one with one recreation aid to assist with sports camps. So in, in essence, the idea is that with a full-time person, you would have less recreation aids needed. And so the current figure for that didn't get taken out is $22,000 for Pension, social security. Yeah, okay, there it is. Okay, good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think it's one of the questions I get. Do you want to answer? I didn't mean to cut you off. I just really want to see what you're doing. You know, we're not, we're not looking to make a profit. But we're looking at ways that we can add to our revenue because we realize that 
that's an important part. I mean, you know, we're not giving everything away. Um, we've talked about all kinds of different things from maybe if uh, when we open up for Camp Kenna, maybe there's going to be more people than the 25 limit that we had. What do we do then? We'd have to have our costs from a getaway would go up. So, all right. And maybe there's some people, just like we lost a lot of people to other park and rec programs around here over the last 10 years. They're paying out of town fees. So maybe we do the same thing if we get people who say, oh, wow, we go up to Canada, they're going to use club getaways facilities. They've got the zip lines. That sounds really exciting. Um, so, and what we heard from David today is there might be some days where we would have to provide three recreational aids because they won't have the staff to fully cover. We can use the grounds, but there are some, some days in the eight week period that we'd like to offer parents, you know, we can deal with your kids for the, every day of the week. You said it's six weeks. Are we going to eight weeks? We're looking at eight weeks. We have been at six. Though. Yeah, been six. Um, we've done eight in the past. Oh, but not in the recent the past. past. It was pre-COVID. No, but we're, we were talking about eight weeks because in essence it is a you know, structured child care. Yeah. You know, so we were cognizant of that. And Matt's had some great ideas about, you know, maybe filling in the gaps um, between Camp Cat and the yeah, after school program with other opportunities for kids. And, and parents to uh, provide some of that needed coverage. Um, so, you know, we're not looking to, to make a profit. Yeah, yeah that's I think that, you know, it's not really, it shouldn't be in their job to any organization. No, but we also are looking at pursuing grants to, to get the funding the money's out there, um, but the commission doesn't feel that one person can can oversee responsibly all the growth of a good, healthy recreation program, and also be looking at um, grants, master plans, everything else. The 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 critical thinking that has to happen. Um, you know, I mean, Matt and I went up to uh, up partway up the trail the other day, and there's a big tree down. Uh, you know, most people can climb over it, but if you've got people who want to go up the trail, that's something that would have to be taken care of. Maybe we can find volunteers, maybe, you know, but it's, that, that's the time consumption. Um, and that, you know, the, the mission really feels that there should be two people to provide continuity. And, um, you know, what if, what if something happened to Matt and he was uh, out sick for 10 days? Do we cancel programs? We, no, no, we want to be able to have the other person in place. Say, Oh, we do this, this, and this. No problem. And okay. To speak on that point, and vice versa, and I don't mean to jump in on Rufus's comment, but vice versa on that. If this person that's the recreate calls out, I can step in temporarily and help substitute in for these programs and plan out what our plan is going to be if this person continues to stay out. It allows for the continuity of operation, which is something that the department, recognizing the past six years, definitely would be beneficial to them and it would be imperative for them and having another person in the role to act in that place and instead of relying just on volunteers it would create that opportunity for them to continue with those programs for providing these services to the town and our community okay yeah. one question i'm just crunching numbers though before uh lynn before you had all the salary the breakdown um that's 
Yeah, please. That was my question. Was the breakdown? Um, so that that fifty eight thousand seven hundred, and this is what I did. Uh, you, know, you know, so I um, I looked at the thirty five two forty one, just divided it in half with eight, and got four thousand four hundred five for a total of seventeen six twenty, and I subtracted that. Well, I subtracted that I that I took four part time. Multiply that by four four zero five and got almost the same exact numbers as you got here. Uh -huh. uh, so I so I kind of want to know what the record leader's salary would be, which is right there. I was literally off by about a hundred dollars. Um, so all of that rec leader part time fifty eight thousand seven thirteen plus twenty two thousand. We're saying is that's the that's but the twenty two thousand is already in the budget this year, so it's not going to show as an increase. I'm just no, pointing no, that no, out. No, no, no. What, 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 what I'm trying to wrap my brain around here. What's the total all salaries, all benefits for this new model? And I'm looking at last year's you know, salary. And what's the total for eight part time, one full time, and all of that? Gotcha. I, I truly, I, I just need two numbers. Like if, if I have one number with all that and one number with there. Then this is much more clear to me. So, are you looking for just to clarify, Glenn? You're looking for what the current department looks like plus the rec lead, and then what our proposed model is with the rec lead? Yes. Okay. Total total pay, gotcha. total salary, total benefits. Okay. And and if I have that, if I'm clear on that number, whatever it is, I'm furiously trying to do math here. So you got to remember, Glenn, that the salary, uh, the benefits were never taken out of this year, so. Yeah. That's correct. Yes. Pretty much yes. what it would be. So I would say the, right. the current operating cost, um, and Lynn, if you don't mind going back to, or yes. actually, uh, do, you, do you have a print up any chance? If not, I can ask them to go to the next item. I'm actually going to print up for development order. Oh, she's doing that. Adding You're it. the best. Thank you. Love that. There's a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say the slide that shows the current, uh, the current model with that number, mm -hmm. that's our current operating cost. And then we can add the recreation lead in, which is the 41,600. So if we go back to that number, which I believe off the top is 57 or 37. I'm so sorry. We've had a lot of numbers go through at the moment. So I'm currently blanking out. That's why I deeply apologize. Well, I but, mean, what he's asking though is for your salary plus the part time, right. plus the health benefits, plus the pension, plus the social security. Yes. Yes. I don't think you had that number. Yeah, whatever. I don't have my number, number for yeah, yeah. the remaining so, part of it, but I do have this. No, I just number. added it up and I and I don't trust that I did it. So again. Um, it really is not as bad of an increase if because of because it, they kept the town didn't ever took out the, uh, the health insurance and stuff. But that's only single coverage. If the person you hire has family, there will be an increase. You didn't, last year it wasn't calculated by on a family? I don't believe so. If it's only 22,000, that's definitely not a family. Okay, well, this year's is set at 31,482. And next year's. But doesn't that include Matt's? Yeah. Okay. So, so Matt, you have to calculate Matt's plus then the new employee, you have to put in family, which is almost $40,000 because you don't know who your candidate is going to be. How did, how did you base it last year? On a I don't know. I, I did not do it last year, so I, I can't answer that question. So Park and Rec came up with this number or they did it with Barbara? Oh. He, Jared was already employed, so he was a. No, no, I'm not saying Jared. Because there was a number, this, this there was a number inserted right. for the recreation leader. I, I believe they used single because I believe that they knew who they anticipated getting that position. Okay, so the, your your total number is one hundred and sixty nine thousand five hundred eighty three, with the caveat of what Joyce just said that if we hired hired a fam somebody who took family insurance, it would be more money. This is 169,000 with this new model. Yep. And just to clarify, that's with having a total of eight recreational part-time staff and the rec lead is how we just solved that correct? Or is that just introducing the four people and 
This number is the four, right? This is the new one. Four. Thank you. Just want to clear. Uh, thank you. And I'm I'm not it's sure I can easily calculate what the current model is. Either. And the, yeah, I'm trying to uh, curve out. I think it's very hard based on. I, I think so. I don't know. I don't know how much they put in for certain things. Like I didn't know it was put in as a single. Yeah, you know, yeah. health insurance. Kind of, you know, the, the number are 22 versus 31, which is Mary LeBron. There's more there, Laura. But you'd have to at least assume a higher rate. Of student. You're right, but you're right. They didn't take it out next year, so. So, so for me, I mean, you know, salary, all of this, like, like I, I kind of want to know the benefits. Like, what's what's the health? What, what is it family? Is it single? What are we talking? So if I have a total amount with one system and the other, this is a no-brainer to me. <laughs> so if if this is a little bit more than what we're doing now, maybe we, it pays itself back. If this is a lot more than the current model, good to talk. Uh, but... Um, but what what are we, what what's the final amount of we talking? I'm seeing numbers all over the place, but yeah. they're not. It's not the number that is real. Is real here. The total amount payout for these person person. I think we're going to have to come back because yeah. I unless Joyce can tell us right now what yeah. what I don't know what how the cafe would have last. Yeah. yeah. So. I think we need to ask Barbara. The current year. We need to ask Barbara. But yeah, well, it was, yeah, that's a single, which I'm sure the numbers don't think had to be a single, two plus. Yeah, and, and yeah, you're right, we forgot all about it. So it's there, I mean, and it's a comparable amount to compare to. But yeah, it's going to be, I think you'd have to, I would really think to, to you know, if we're going to put it in, recommend it, whatever, it had to be at least what would be at the, at the most. Yeah. Just so there's a bunch of it. It could always go back, it could always not use it, but um, okay. they, have to, they won't use it at all. Yeah. It's true. So, well, so what just, about this concept, Glenn? Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I just want to say in general, um, I mean, Park and Rec is doing great things. I'm glad you're here. Uh, thank, you. thank you for, for taking our questions. Uh, uh, thank you to the commission and everybody for this um, this, this PowerPoint. Um, it is, I like the idea. I like simplicity. If it's less people, okay, it's less of you running around trying to get AIDS. Um, I mean, I can ask a bunch of questions about how many hours does each one do, but I, I, I'm not going to go there. Yeah. I'm just going to say that that it's, you know, ha having four part-timers and someone who's full-time working with you, I think it's a pretty good model. Now, is this a model that we want to do? Is this something that we can afford knowing that you need X amount for ball fields or X amount for parks? So we have to balance the needs of what you need to maintain things and improve things as opposed to helping you in, in this in this town hall, um, uh, in terms of people power, so so for me that's that's the balance for me. What's going to make your job easier for you? Because we want you to be successful here in the town of Kent. We want you to continue on the good work that Jared has done, and um, I certainly don't want to hinder your start. You've been here for a week, uh, so uh, so. But I think I personally need a little more information about the actual money. Um, and then after that, I mean, we can st we're still talk again and move forward. That makes any sense. Sure. That makes sense. So happy to provide you with those numbers and happy to get those to you ASAP and calculate. So great. Yeah, great. As you well, yeah. I guess what I would say, but my, my main concern really has to do with the number of the bottom programming and the, and the plan programming and so on. You know, you have Bunko in there. Bunko is pretty much run by one individual. It's run by with a few of the seniors. You really have no involvement. It's, you know, really, it's using the the senior center or whatever. Um, it's mostly seniors that go there. I think it across. But anyway, it has to be. <laughs> it has right. to be. <laughs> it's going to be very hard for to play baseball. Yeah, but yeah, but right. But so some of those things, and, and, and I am concerned about some of the, the things when we when we call it recreation and it's, it's food related. I can understand a picnic or special event or you know, Easter egg thing with. But to have lunches and, and things like that, I mean, if it's co-sponsored where there's an event, an activity that's done along with the social services who we should be running the, the lunch program and we need to get them to, to kind of pick up the pace a little bit on that, I think they recognize that. Um, that's different than you guys being responsible for a meal. Uh, that, that really isn't in your will. It shouldn't be in your will, I don't think. So I think some of those things when you focus where you go with your programs, you know, are on the recreation and, and listen, I'm all in favor of Part my father's like around this, so that's why I threw it out. Gotcha. But I was like, thinking of the word, I was like, I've heard it before, and I'm blanking on that the bulk. But, no. but, but, but I was, you know, but I worked out, and I spent a couple years working at that field trying to get that. We actually had 
the golf course at superintendent working on that back in the day from Old Bridge, but it's good for the school here. Like, has to play soccer, but, but it, it really needs a lot of work, and really it needs a professional approach to it. And I, and I think I'd always support that in, in our capital plan or the funding. What exactly costs? Which is fifty to sixty grand to go in and resurface the top of that, reseed it, and then do some kind of maintenance and, and operations where we don't have the the geese coming in and ripping up the turf again, looking for the bugs in the winter. That needs to be done. So there's a real comprehensive thing in that. So that I want to make sure we can do that. We as a town support that and certainly, uh, and, and it means first off we can support that. Um, and I guess I just worry that we don't overdo ourselves with the type of programs, but the number of people we're actually serving per program, right? Two, six, seven, eight, nine. You know, when, when it could be maybe less with more. I don't know. I mean, at least that's that's going to be your and the commission's review of how the operations go. But um, but I guess you know, down the line, I'd say I, uh, I, I'd be willing to let them go to the town to decide that, to really look at what they want to do. You know, so I, I would not want to stop it here. Um, I have reservations about it, but but uh, I want to hear other people and and anyone else that wants to talk. But I I really do appreciate the presentation. You know, and and um, I think these things are maybe clean up a little bit or maybe kind of focus, but that's that's just my my view of that. But uh, so um, yeah. no, I mean, if I had to push back on your your concerns about the lunch programs, because the lunches are a social activity for the seniors. And, the, you know, they want more, not less. And you heard the other day from, from uh, Samantha that she doesn't see it in their bandwidth that they're gonna be able to do more. So by co collaborating social services mm -hmm. and Park and Rec together, we're able to offer more to the seniors. So I don't see why we would want to pull back when it's an activity that they like and it's working. It's getting people out of their houses. It's getting them socializing with each other and they get to eat good food. <laughs> well, then we then, then should charge them. There should, be, there should be a cost to that because we're not here just to feed people and have them get together and enjoy their time. That shouldn't be our main focus. We can have recreation in part. Part of that, I do appreciate, and I agree with you in the sense of the socialization important. I have a lot of seniors. I'm a senior, so I could go to lunch. I don't know if I should. But um, so I just don't think that we want to become a food service organization, even at the seniors. We have a lot of seniors in town. It's a growing population. There could be other activities, I agree. I just think at some point, then at that point, um, it doesn't, if we're, all we're doing is supplementing the food that we, we give to people, not all, okay, but a large part of it is provide a lunch. I'm not sure that's really should be the focus of a senior center unless it's a nutrition center. And if it's a total nutrition center, then we need to look at a whole nutrition program at the town that even supersedes Park and Rec and maybe social services that actually takes a look at, at the nutritional, you know, supplementation of, of our seniors. If that's an issue, I mean, if it's just to get together and have a good time, well, we could have coffee hours and we could do other activities and, and have people bring snacks or something. Some of them have their own homes and so on. Maybe they'd be willing to do that. Part of it is that we're not supposed to do everything for everybody all the time. People still are independent in, in their senior years. I think most of them are there. There are a lot of them are not. But in, it's in, in you know, with, with Templeton there, with uh, our senior center, uh, with access to the other people that we're hoping to do with with other, you know, rec, uh, excuse me, uh, homes and, and, and housing and so on available for seniors as we get older, that we keep them here. I, I, you know, I think it's important. But again, I just, you know, would want to make sure that if we really need to go to a nutrition issue, then we look at it as a separate program. Is nutrition, not just as recreation, and then take up our park and recreation people doing lunches along with, with their seniors. Now, seniors, seniors that I'm talking about social services are important for health and, and mobile. That's what they, they deal with. And, and they do have things. I just don't know the growth of all the other lunches. I'm a little hesitant to pitch that in as a, as a big part of our park and recreation. Well, well I mean, the there's part. always been a donate. Well, there's been a history of it, like asking for a donation, but they don't demand it. So, like, that has been long, a long-standing history of like, but it's only like two dollars. I mean, maybe three dollars for the the previous Friday lunch programs. Um, the key is, I think, and I've said this to Samantha and Rosemary, is that that why don't we figure out ways to get you know use the resources of the independent schools, use the resources of the restaurants, so it's really not costing us that much money. And then they're socializing with the young people from the high schools, and it's a win-win, you know? 
Yeah, Kim, I don't know how, again, I, you know, just it's a question of how long we can go to the schools and say, would you fund two a month or teach at the schools or, or whatever. We used I mean, to do one month. One a month in, in the restaurants. have been all, everybody's been very generous. There's no doubt about that. Um, but if it's taking up so much of our time and our planning time and our, our management time to do it, I, I just think that should be weighed in with all your other programs. And, you know, and uh, no. it's also a way because we want to do recreation programs for the seniors, strength and balance, you know, all kinds of different things. A luncheon is a way for us to be there get to know them and to communicate upcoming programs. Um, you know, I've, I've been involved with the senior center in New Melford for a number of years now. The, the number of times that people come down to say, well, I couldn't figure it out sitting at home when they get the newsletter, you know, and they get muddled, they get confused, but if, if they're there, and there's somebody there who can say, oh, this is when we're starting, this is, you know, make sure you fill this out, we'll get in touch with you, et cetera, et cetera. That helps. And that happens in the lunch, lunches all the time down in New Melford. And they also, I mean, they provided lunches four days a week, which is more of the nutritional program. It was a donation box, you know. Um, so, and... You know, some people don't donate anything, but other people will donate a few dollars more than, you know. Again, I, 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 you know, I do appreciate that it's, we're not eating that five million on it. Stay with my, my thoughts. I'm not looking to make profit. I'm not liking that we have to do a revenue producing organization. There just should be some offsets. Um, again, it's, it, it's, again, it's more on the, the large side management of what we can, can't do and, and who actually should. You're right. I, there's a lot of people that show up. I've been there a couple of times. You and I've been into one of the uh, lunches that the, the uh, Lions Club helped to you know, uh, serve and all that stuff. It was great. Organization and fight, you know, sponsor a lot of it. And somebody gave a hand. That was great. Um, and it was false. So somebody's hearing something about it. I mean, the information is getting out. So communication being key, um, you know, I mean, somehow somebody, either they knew about it or what. And if I guess maybe Spike was serving food and it was a good meal, you know, to get there. It was kind of a Christmas yeah. thing anyway. So it was a big thing. Um, I think it was social services that day, actually. Yeah. But, yeah, I was not correct. But yeah, so, but yeah, okay. I'm not going to argue about this stuff. I, I, I agree with you. I really do in a lot of ways. Um, I guess I just... You know, again, when we're looking at management and people and personnel and, and, and so on, my concern, of course, is to make sure that it's done within the structure of, of what we can and can't do. And it's looked at how we actually can achieve things with, you know, the demographic. Seniors are growing. I don't doubt that. So there's activities probably more geared towards that. Um, I wish we had more, you know, younger people to be in schools to be more involved uh, of that age. I don't know what we do with high school. I don't know anybody, too many high school kids living in town anymore than I say a couple uh, down my way, but not as many as I'd like to see. But um, so, okay. I mean, yeah, that's really my comment. So, I have one last question, um, sure. kind of a day to day question, and you've only been here for all of a week. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> so I'm sure you, you know where your office is now here. Uh, but I know Jared had another office that was smaller and that was moved. And I remember the move, and that was because he had so much uh, uh, equipment, uh, you know, park and rec, uh, and all of that. So he had basketballs and things. Uh, and uh, so I'm assuming that you were there where he, he left. So I'm assuming that's the same, same office. Same office. Yep. So if we're adding personnel, if we're adding a full time person, that person will go in with you, I'm assuming. Is there enough space? Are we dislocating anybody else? Uh, do we need more space? What is the space issue regarding? I can jump in on that. So evaluating my office, I have started to condense things and move things around to make some space just so that I, I like organized things. <laughs> I'm an organized person. I like to make sure things are good. I'm with you. In good places. <laughs> so um, there's the desk by the door currently that has a bell on it, which I love to see. And I love when people come in and hit it just to randomly get my attention. If I'm looking at the computer, they come in and just hit it for fun. Why not? So um, that space could be a great, a great location for this individual to sit and have a desk space. And then with moving some stuff around in the office, I noticed upstairs that there was some um, shelving that we could utilize that's for park and rec. It looks like it's in the park and rec stuff. Um, just making sure that that's brought downstairs and giving them that space. Okay. It could be. Right, yep. Yeah. And I, okay. I'm sorry. And just in addition to that question, uh, I was talking to someone today who just wants to know where the park and rec office was and, and how, how do teens in particular go and see you? 
And I said, well, the office is in town hall. And, and this person said, well, do teens often come to town hall? I mean, you know, they, got, they got school and stuff during the day. Uh, but um, I'm sure people visit, you know, all the time. Uh, but how many teens in particular come and see you and talk about their issues or anything? I mean, you know, you just got yeah, so, yeah, it's a great question. I just got but, here. So. But, but truly, I, I, had, I, had, I had someone say to me today, like, 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 like how, how, how open is the office? Can anyone go in, especially teens? And I have a teenager and this teenager wants to do X, Y, and Z in town and just doesn't know where to go. I said, well, there's always emails. <laughs> and that wasn't quite good enough. So just 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 throw that out. I mean, if it's not a real yeah. question, but uh, but you know, how can okay. so build us a new building for <laughs> Ken Park and Rack, you will accept it. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I talk a little bit about a little bit about this we came in. I made it, I approached Ken Center School. And there's a room, the rooms are now part of the security issue over there. Um, there's room 11, which is for as long as I've been there, uh, in, in the school, it's now 10 years in and out of that school. Uh, it's been used as a uh, overflow for some music that David does with you know, instruments. Um, it's been used as storage. Um, right now there's a foosball table and part of a ping pong table and right in the front window, you can see it. That room also has an exterior door. One of the few rooms that has an actual exterior door is like outside of the science lab, uh, you know, through the greenhouse or whatever at the end of the school on the, on the south side. Um, I approached the school and asked them about using, utilizing that for about an 18 month period. And this was back in December. Um, and I've heard nothing back from them yet. They stonewalled me along with the use of the 14 passenger bus, which is part of what, what kind of bugs me about the cooperation with the school that the town actually funds, even though give them the money to run. I've been there, I understand it from that side. But I also understand that we really need to cooperate more for the ability to do things and have a vehicle. Now I know that bus, I walk it two or three times a day, early with my dog late at night, and that bus hasn't moved in months. Maybe it's been used for basketball a couple of times, I don't know, put back, but it seems to have a lot more snow on it than necessarily. But anyway, as for that room, for the, the, the point that it has a bathroom, in it, it has an, an exterior access, we can put other security components on any doors of the interior, um, and, go, and then my proposal to, to the principal, uh, Michelle Mott, was you she would have oversight of the room and, and, and coordination of anybody coming and going and, and whatever we do, but it is also big enough as a classroom, as in most classrooms there, it's an old third grade classroom, I think, at one point, um, that you could put your, your, your equipment in there and some things, you could put a desk or two in there, you could be centered, and you would have access to kids getting off the bus, from the high school who might want to do walk in town. There's a couple that walk through that might want to go in and, and talk, park and rec. You're certainly closer to the playing fields. And there's an independent mode to that. You, there, it's, it's staffed by a maintenance guy till 10 o'clock at night. Um, so, and they would check everything as they always do. They check their exterior door and every interior door as part of their, their routine. Um, I, I think that's partly the issue about you know having to store things in yet. We talked about that. We talked about the basement, about potentially it's dry down there. There are areas you could, and it has a door access from here. You know, it goes right out the back. So you you know you can move things in and out with without ringing the bell and be looking up every time I get <laughs> because it's right by the back door in that little office I have, the office I have. Um, and there are issues that have, but when I got in here, I said, when I first came here, I said, I'm not going to change rooms, let everybody kind of stay here. I know Park and Rec was going through the change. I didn't want to monkey things up. But looking at post plans and changes and, and coordination and, and, and optimization of, of working and, and people and so on, um, there may be potential for, for moving some, having to look at it, re rearranging the, the, uh, the offices. So, not yours, Teresa. No, we already talked about that. Uh, right, sure, voters are good down there for now. <laughs> Fog, we have early voting here, lucky. No, um, but, uh, there, but there are other things that we would look, need to look at to, to expand and improve our ability to have meetings here and, and to utilize this building for other functions. So, so what you're saying is that there is a room at KCS that has a bathroom mm -hmm. and an exterior door that can fit 10 to 15 kids and a couple of adults? It could potentially. That's I, mean, not, I would have to look. It's a classroom currently being used. It's utilized. It's somewhat. I'd say it's not currently at all. I mean, I know that that uh, the music it does have. David does go in and do some lessons in there. I guess if he's got other things going on in his music room. But again, it's less and less. I'm sure in accommodations. Now I also looked at. And it's near the ball field. Sorry, it's, it's near the ball field. It's on the. How close is it to the ball field? It's. You're my truck away. It's in that parking lot. It's midway. If you go, ever go down there, could we halfway down the building? It's halfway down the building. Could, yeah. we, could we look into this for parking right, please? Because yeah, this is exactly what this person was saying today. There's nowhere for kids to go to to, to hang out with parking right people. 
I mean, it's another space. It's a space for for balls. For it's right there. And if 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 we decide to go with a full time person, it's another space. Don't know if we want to go there, but it's an option. Yeah. So just saying. Right. It's an option to again. I'm not, like I said, I'm not proposing anything, but I'm certainly going with the, uh, the idea that the town uh, can, you know, it should probably take a look at this. But yes, it would expand the ability to have something near the playing fields on that side. Not there's, and again, depending on whatever happens, and I looked at it as an 18 month to see whatever would happen with other facilities that we've been looking at, that you're know, looking at a lot, and see what could happen about using that as well, even if it's off the space or storage area, whatever, um, on the other side of the town, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, Swift House, let's say it. Let's go ahead and say the word. Swift House. If we ever get if that's what we ever go with. You say the like dirty word. It shall not be named. It's not Baltimore, York. Every time we say house, Dan's going to appear on the screen. But anyway, but the, the thing is, you know, as a town, we have facilities. The school is part of our facilities. And, it, you know, and I know they, they have quite a lot of tuition students, which are great. And their numbers, they promote as 196. There's 166 Ken residents there. So again, if you're looking for additional, you know, income from tuition or an out of town fee or whatever, those kids might be a part of that. They might actually get more involved if they had were closer to that. Again, just again, just looking at the bigger picture of what the town can do and where we can go. You know, there's really no place at the community house. I mean, I've been through there again. I went there the other day just to look. It's just it needs more renovation. I know. I know Joyce is, is looking at that as well. Uh, We've expanded Samantha. Uh, we I went over and helped her unload. We did the other day unload a bunch of uh, food for the food bank, and she's actually expanded from one room to another room in there. You probably know that mm -hmm. the back room, which is great, and we've got cooler so that more food and more people are there. And that's and she's you know she told us that. Um, so looking at where we could go, and the school is a facility we don't really use. I mean, we use basketball. We have you know park and rec is there. Tuesday nights, I think, for you know open basketball, um, and we you know have the sports teams there and. Um, I guess other organizations have asked to use asked to use it, asked to use it. Sorry, um, and I guess they do at times. I'm not sure to what extent it's actually used um, by other organizations. Um, you know, that might be looking for a place to to meet and so on. But um, you know, and a beautiful library there that also is a nice meeting area. But again, there's that room that's always been kind of in my back of my mind. Is maybe we don't optimize it. Maybe we, as the town and the school, as as an entity of, of Kent, um, could actually optimize it. I have gone to Jen Duncan and asked to get on her agenda. Um, I didn't push it for, for January. Uh, February, they switched their meeting around, canceled it for their own budget hearings, and they have stuff going on with the region. But I don't really know where they are. I've not received any kind of work back from them when they would like me to go and actually make a presentation or have a bigger discussion. But I, I've, I've met you know, with both the chairman of the school board and the principal of the school to say, what can we do to help Park and Rec? It, it, you know, have a facility where they you know, have access to it. They could back their truck right up to the room if they had to store something for a while and so on. Um, and also, you know, it always worked within the constraints of the school and security. They have a new ASO, armed security officer. And, but, you know, that isn't anything I think it's unsurmountable. It's just, again, management. So I don't know. But, you know, as far as... You know, how do we increase recreation? How do we, you know, optimize the programs we have and the personnel and the office space and all that kind of stuff? If if ever a decision is looked at to go or or to increase or, or manage it, we need to have some something more, I think, than we have, which is a band aid approach right now. All right, uh, sorry. I think it would be great if you were able to go to the Kent Center School and ask to see the room so you can actually visualize. Well, you know, yeah, definitely. Like and that year, we're doing quite a, a lot with stuff. I mean, he actually coached baseball, I think, last spring for the school, for the middle school sport program. So, and, uh, you know, so I know he knows his way around the locker rooms and so far. But that is a room that very rarely do I, I mean, I'm not there during the school day, but, you know, it's not a lot of work. It's, it's there on weekends. It, you know, could be accessible, could be locked. We could modify it with probably a lot less money to help with the school or pay for them to do it under their auspices of control and in, in their security systems and so on. Certainly would, we would never want to broach that or try to, you know, purloin their, their responsibility for, for you know, managing that. But I still think it's something that we have to look at. And I'll continue to, to ask for that. I think the board should too. I mean, historically, you know, there have been programs, park and rec and programs, granted the security concerns have changed the over the years, but you know, there have been programs that utilize the gym and other things outside of school hours. Oh, sure. Summer basketball programs for yeah. kids and things like that. It's happened yet. 
and and the ASP is there. I mean, for actually, we're in the you know in the cafeteria, and uh, you know there's always issues of storage as well. If, if there's issues of storage, I, I know kind of like when there were the potato chip boxes were upstairs in Parker Rank. You're still there. It's only got to make sure that they stay fresh. Then I check them every now and then. But yeah, you can charge them. But anyway, um, so what do you guys want to do? But, um, I mean, uh, well, I think Glenn wants more detail. Okay, right. I'd like some more detail. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not prepared to make a decision today. Okay. Okay. Um, but but I will if, uh, yeah, again, just, just more detail, especially about the health. Um, okay. And how much we're paying out. And, um, right, we can do that. We can ask um, also... Um, Barbara, for a little more information on, on yeah. what the number last year was for the benefit if it was for a single tree. And that's all I need after that. I mean, just, I just want some, just, just some raw numbers. And, uh, but I really enjoyed your presentation. And uh, and I, I thank you. Thank you for coming. Welcome to you guys. Thanks so much for hearing me out. Sorry. Welcome, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are glad you <laughs> You ever want to go on a hike with you? I'm going to take you up to the top of that trail up there. There's a bomb there. So, what? I don't know if there is a bomb there. I don't know if there is a bomb there. I don't know if there is a bomb there. I don't know if there is a bomb there. I don't know if there is a bomb there. I don't know Absolutely. Yeah. So, thank you, Rufus. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Question, please. Oh, um, yeah. Well, well, if well, it's about this, I'm just wondering where the rest of the budget is. Is that going to be discussed? Their budget, or yeah, that's, that's what we're asking for. It's actual more breakdown of all their revenue and the rest of their. Yeah. It is in there. The, the supporting document. Yeah. You do have. Did you get a chance to look at it? I have it. I didn't know. I guess they were just discussing the one full time pressure you have. Well, that would be what was it? It's a budget worksheet and in the supporting documents. Okay. It's usually you go through the whole budget, not just one particular line. Right. When we ask, you know, they ask to come and get a presentation, but we're asking them folks to come back with more information and more breakdowns, not just on the, I mean, we'll ask it, the complete budget the next time. Okay. For sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Teresa. Mm -hmm. Just going to lose this. I make sure to Ah. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Can you um, have a copy of the report um, answering the questions that you asked? Um, I should read it into the minutes, I'm going to assume. We'll put it in the minutes. You don't have to read it all. You know, we'll, we'll wait for you reading this, but we'll, I want to make sure it's in the minutes. Okay, so you don't want me to read it? I don't think, it, it, I don't think, I mean, it's quite an extensive yes, it is. piece. I mean, if well, you, you really want to talk. If you, if you really wanted to, I would yes, but I would accept it as, as a report into the minutes. But if you want to talk to it, um, um, you're welcome. however, you'd like to do it, I can right, talk to it. Yes, if yeah. that's what you'd like, okay. All right, we put a lot of paper into this, so whatever you want, however you want. Okay, so attach um, our two reports, um, at answering your questions about um, the registrars and the um, deputies, um, hours and amount yeah. of um, compensation. Um, in addition to that, I would like to point out that it was really, uh, we've, the deputies and the registrars are on one line because the deputies um, serve at our request. They don't actually have time. Um, their time is used for our vacations, um, for, you know, to cover the office while we're away. Um, if we're sick, um, if we um, retire, resign, whatever. Um, so that's what the deputies have been in the past. In addition to that, however, they do have duties such as attending all of the elections, um, 
and referendums, some of the town meetings, recounts, that type of thing. Um, Can I just say, are they required to be there when you say duties? Like, are they required to be at every election, every primary? Well, or we or is it your choice? Of they're not there. But, um, yeah, it's either them or they're somebody that we would assign to that position. So that position does have to be filled. Okay. Um, it doesn't have to be filled by that particular person. It could be, um, you know, if somebody were sick and couldn't attend something, we would fill in, we would have somebody fill in for that position. So when you say that position, is there a deputy registrar position at, at, a, at an election? Yes. Okay. There are actual, actually two deputy registrar positions okay. at each and every election. Um, so the staffing for the early voting, you know, that's a that's a big issue. And you can explain to me, but yeah, I think the board really needs to hear how you're planning on doing that. Early voting is huge, and that is why um, uh, the, the huge increase in particularly our um, compensation area of deputies and registrars. Um, just because of the extra hours that are needed. We will be using deputies and registrars. Um, we project to use deputies and registrars solely for early voting. So it will be the four of us who will be doing early voting. One of the deputies or somebody taking the place of one of the deputies will be a moderator as well as being a deputy. Um, we, we, of course, have an increase in the, the poll workers line as well. I um, mean, that has to do more with it being a presidential election year than anything else. Um, well, we don't intend to use poll workers for early voting. <laughs> Um, and the early voting, explain to where it's going to take place. I'm sorry. Where your plan is to have the early voting take place? Oh, up in our office. Um, we have already, um, we didn't get a response back yet from the state, but we did have to certify where we were going to hold it. Um, and it will be up in our office. And the hours are 10 to 6, correct? Uh, it will be 10 to 6 for the April presidential um, primary. It will be 10 to 6 for the August primary. It will be 10 to 6 for the November primary for the exception of two days when it will be 8 to 8. Um, and that's laid out in the information that I sent to you. Um, there's also an increase in the line for supplies. Um, above what I would have normally thought. Well, maybe I should go back and say there's a decrease in that because of the um, the fireproof file that we had to buy last year. So that would have brought it down. However, we had to add some more back into that because um, we have additional ballots to print. So that supply line is not just scotch tape and pens. That that is um, all the ballots that need to be printed, all the ballots that need to be coded, all the um, it's let's see where uh, it's um, our telephone, it is um, our maintenance agreements, it is um, the batteries for our tabulators at thirty dollars a piece. Um, it's belonging to Roast, which is, um, I'm sure it's an acronym for something, but um, it's 
actually when um, they, they're a third party provider and they send information to us about who has moved out of town or who they believe have moved out of town. So we have to check it out to make sure that those people have moved out of town before we can take them off the rosters. Um, but that's, uh, that's one of the expenses in the supply line. Um, uh, I, you would see that the mileage was not used much during the COVID years. But of course, now that we are past the COVID years, we are expecting the mileage to be greater. Uh, in fact, we will be sending two of our uh, poll workers to Vernon to be trained for a moderator. So we'll have extra moderators, um, which of course are required for early voting as well as for an election. Um, I guess we should go back up to the deputy and uh, registrar's line for a moment. Um, part of that has to do with what it would basically be. Part of it has to do with what the um, early voting itself would be when it's open to the public. And part of that has to do with training. We are expecting about, I'm, I'm guessing about $6,000 for training. Um, and that training is um, we'll provide training for early voting. It'll provide training for CVRS, which is our um, software program through the state that, um, that allows us to register people throughout the state. So we are expecting to receive that new program in June. So we are starting with early voting in April. We are starting with a new program, a software program in June. That's the target date. We are expecting um, another primary in August, which will have a component of early voting to it. And then we will have the presidential election in November. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it's a lot of new, and that's why our budget is as it is. And it's also, you know, my last sentence on here is that um, you guys aren't the only ones very frustrated with um, not being able to come up with exact numbers. We just can't. We have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. We don't have any idea really of how much time it's going to take for training. So I don't know that that's pretty much it. Do you have oh one of the questions on here was also um, the community house, which I I would love to see the, it be wired in case we need it for um, a CVRS program. And that would have to go through the, um, the state as well as Frontier. Frontier does the work, um, but they have to coordinate with the state. It takes months to get on the list to have this happen. So it's not going to be helpful in the April or the um, August primaries. In addition to that, it might be helpful to look around at what other places in town could be useful in case of an emergency or in case of an overflow. And that's also been here. Um, I would suggest that the school be one. I mean, we wouldn't want to go to the school, but if we had to be somewhere, um, it, some schools will cordon off um, part of the school so that we could use the cafeteria or the gym or something along those lines. But that wouldn't be helpful at all if they didn't have CBRS. 
CVRS is now going to be the cornerstone of whether you can use a different facility or not. It could also possibly be the nutrition center. So, in fact, I think the nutrition center was one of the sites that we could go to in case of an emergency, but now we have the component of having to have it wired for CBRS. Yeah, it might actually be um, part of the CBRS wiring and, and getting you know the, the upload and download. It's really the upload speeds that are the issue. Maybe not so much CBRS, but with some of the other programs, we have that CEN. Right, Connecticut Education Network um, that we are on the list for. I went to another webinar today where they repeated that, yeah, six months or so. Uh, they're, they're still way behind on the fiber. But um, yeah, the, we talked a little bit last night and, and before, and, and I, when she mentioned that, and we looked at um, potential for, uh, I think Lindy had mentioned it before, but the community house itself. Part of that would be how would you get, I mean, if you needed to use those small rooms that are up off the stage. How do you get people up on the stage? You know, that, that might have to have a, a component of an ADA support thing for that as well. Um, but senior center was already on a single level and useful. I mean, seniors can get in, and we still have a lot of seniors that vote, and they might want to, you know, do that early voting. We have to, of course, coordinate during the time to make sure we're not doing it with all a you know, park rec or a, or a uh, nutrition program or social service program. But nice. potentially, if we wire it, at least gives us an option. To use that as a uh, secondary site, or whatever. Um, and, and the thing is, you can't split. You wouldn't be able to do here and there and somewhere else. It would be one at a time, correct? Uh, Are you asking if you can have more than one? Right. Yes. You, you can't can have, have multiple okay. uh, places that have CBRS. But then right, but we'd have to have personnel at each correct. location. <laughs> oh, what I'm saying is, yeah, you, could, you, you wouldn't oh, like, right. split your okay, voting so, area. So you're asking whether we could move our entire, uh, no, we, we could not. <laughs> because we need to have all of our files available, our, our hard copy files available as well. So somebody would have to be in the office wherever the office is located. And if we move out of the building or out of, actually out of the room, then we would have to have additional personnel. So that becomes quite pricey. And it's not really as convenient as having it all in one place. That would be for early voting. Um, I was talking more globally about um, the entire operation of elections. So is the idea for November that you would have early voting in your office or the early voting would be in here? No, early voting would be in the office because that would be 14 days prior to the day of voting. Okay. Um, the estimate from other states around us is um, somewhere between 20 and 30 percent of the people take advantage of early voting. But we don't know if, or I don't know whether that's in the first year or not. You know, it does this mean over time that it is 20 to 30 percent? Not with the event. And then throwing that on top of that, no, no, the um, no excuse uh, early um, uh, absentee Absolutely. ballot. Yeah, that's probably going to come through the legislation this year, legislation this year. Um, so yeah, uh, it's just a lot of but anyway. So there's a lot of frustration. Yeah, I know. It, it, and not so hard numbers. I'm sorry. Not far enough, which is why I'm not crunching numbers right now. <laughs> right, no, yeah. I saw you with your <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I think the only job I would never want to have ever is Secretary of State. <laughs> I've met her a couple of times and had her speak, and she is a remarkably together individual who really is planning and working her tail off to try to capture all these things that are sneaking around on her with a little support. You know, I said that before, a little support from the executive. Like but anyway, um, but yeah. I, mean, I certainly understand. Well, I appreciate that you put so much time into creating this narrative. Oh, well, really good. Thank and you. I want to read through it very carefully. Okay. Well, I hope it all makes sense. If you have any questions, the door is always open. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, Thank we you certainly will, will come back and, and, and ask any questions. If it's open. Yeah. Well prepared. <laughs> any questions for us? Uh, Teresa, any, any questions for us? 
I don't think so. You've always been very helpful. Uh, you know, I, I'm looking forward to seeing how all this works. They all are. <laughs> um, you had mentioned the more potential about using that upstairs uh, breakout room demo as an area potentially. Uh, obviously, you feel for your staff or whatever, it's a break room like you have here for others. So I don't continue to be part of that. That's part of the issue, too, with room. I mean, for two weeks at a time and a week here and then a few days there, um, the space it becomes an issue of having enough space for you to operate and have staff come out, take a break or whatever or at lunch while they're going through for 10 to 6. So it's not like, you know, it's just a couple hours. So, um, yeah, we've already talked about that. And, mm -hmm. and that was, you know, kind of given to them during that time. Yeah, we'll see how it works now. You know, who knows what will happen by November. We hope to learn a lot in April, and then we'll learn more in August. Hopefully, by the time November comes, we'll really have this time packed and know all the answers to everything. In the meantime, you know, we are... Um, we have a very safe and secure voting system, and... People should not be concerned about whether um, our voting system is secure or not. It absolutely is. Uh, I know when you you look you when you hear about oh man you know I don't know about this I don't know about that but that's all numbers and it really has nothing to do with the actual vote. We have a, a locked cabinet for the vote after one actually fills in their ballot, it'll be placed in a locked cabinet and will be transferred at the end of the evening to a more secure place. Okay. Very important work. Thank you. Yeah, Hopefully you know. I'm sorry. What's Very that? important work. Thank you. All that you did. <laughs> so follow up on our, our additional uh, issue with uh, the budgeting. I, I kind of put together a couple more days um, and, and I'll get that in the record for, and, and these are recommended, suggested, uh, cleared a couple of days for some organizations they've agreed that they can at attend. Others I have worked out and follow. Um, also, based on their work schedule here in the town, so we can get them while they're actually here. Um, it's, um, it says the 2024 25 budget review dates for departments, grants, and associations, which is Pretty much inclusive of everything. I think we also need to look at our income at one point, but we'll do the whole budget as a total. Um, Thursday, February 29th, we've got so many things going on next week. I did check the weather. It looks like it might be rainy, but not snowy. So, um, but yeah, so we've got the issues. I think we're okay for Tuesday. Um, Thursday does have a little snow coming, but um, we looked at Kent Memorial Library, which I did confirm. <laughs> Uh, town clerk, um, we'll be all that. and then uh, administrative assistant. Uh, that's when I will make that presentation, as I mentioned before. I didn't mention. And, and uh, Joyce, hopefully, will be back. She is still recovering at home, but I really do appreciate her being here today. And then uh, the Board of Finance, and, and we'll talk to you. Uh, yeah, um, uh, what's her name? Yeah, um, I'm telling uh, Bonnie to make sure that we answer anything for the Board of Finance. Oh, I was uh, talking to her about EMS staffing. Oh, we messed up. That's right. Yeah. Okay, I'm just thinking. But anyway, board of finance is a small number, but we'll ask them if there's any issues they have, or they can write a statement. But we'll review it all, so we'll make sure we get. And then Friday, March first. At least I have it at four. Sometimes you guys are available at three thirty. Um, I don't know if you just want to stay at four, or I would keep it on four, or look at. But you can look. We can adjust the times actually. I'm also at three thirty. Yeah, on any of these days. But um, yeah. So, okay. so, so I'm sorry, jumping ahead to two. Uh, when does your break start? Uh, his, no, break. his break. His oh, break. I am. I am done the first of March. So I have my afternoons are are pretty much clean. Well, I'm just wondering if we could go earlier. Sure. I have something four o'clock. So and yeah, I'm no, sure I, these I, I, people I, I, would love to not have to come at four. Which day is it? Monday, March fourth. Monday, March fourth. Go earlier, maybe. At I can go yeah, way earlier. All right. I could go one. Uh, go. Okay. Um, well, that's the other thing I was going to mention about. Um, the, that day has a bunch of things going on that day, but um, we might make some switches, and that's okay. Um, because two, um, 
I'm probably going to uh, invite Maureen Brady in. She's doing a little bit better and be able to get in and, and then give her that, that uh, the oh, office okay. and all that. But I think we can move it to four. I don't think it's an issue if we move it back a little bit. We tried to get it in a day and we'll see. Um, or I could go even, even but, earlier that day. Well, we could, yeah, we could look at it. I know we have um, Monday, March 4th, we have a um, 11 o'clock. Um, 10 o'clock. <clears throat> 10 o'clock department meeting. Thank you. Sorry. 10 to 11 department meeting. And then, so uh, we are open at 12. I, mean, yeah, I could do 12. 10. I could do 12. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll see if we can get everybody in. It's a The board assessment appeals and the taxes at the end. Yeah. So is that a roof? That's roof. Yeah. 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 Come in. It's yeah. small money. Yeah. yeah. And then your tax assessment would be at the same time. Kind of grouping it together as well. Okay. And yeah, that would be the bite. So, but back to Friday, March 1st, um, a lot of people are on a different work schedule. Um, but we can do all the cats and dogs, the grants, the uh, associations, attorney fees, and things like that that don't really require people to be here. Um, we could get the information, and, and I think we uh, will pull all that together. Uh, there's a couple that I have issues with, questions with, and, and we're co corresponding with those organizations. But uh, we'll try to get them in there if we need to talk to them. Right. Mostly it's, uh, it's, it's pro forma things like uh, HYSB and things like that. Uh, we're going. I'm going with Samantha to look at HYSB tomorrow and talk to them. Um, you know, and their numbers are the same. There's no increase, no change, uh, unless there was a specific question we had, and we could formulate questions or, or at least review it and then find out any questions at all. That's kind of the. Um, if you look at the thing, that's, that's you know, there's stuff in there for and the grants and things. Uh, uh, Northwood Conservation District and Community Nursery School. Which I don't know if we actually had, had their. They never. At last we talked, they hadn't submitted. Correct. Susan B. Anthony, uh, Project Sage, which did submit um, the, the same amount. Again, both of these are all the same. Um, we did take the Cemetery Association out because that will need another well, line item on here. We'll put that under. Um, and then uh, the only one is Eugene um, Howe, or excuse me, the uh, Greenwoods, which. Um, they weren't an increase in yeah, chore service. Yeah, in chore service, that was the other one. Thank you to our services. Um, and everyone else is pretty much the same order has been actually reduced. You know, we see volunteers going down a little bit. So, uh, and then uh, attorney fees fairly stayed, um, except we do have to talk a little bit about uh, SCAC, but we'll talk about that actually in our regular board meetings. We have our order. Mm -hmm. presentation with that. I thought he was in favor of the presentation. Well, he sort of is, but he's still. Working uh, to, to finish up, and he had some recommendations. Oh. And he put some great time on together. We just finished talking about that today, so you'll be getting all that here. Next oh. so, yeah, it's pretty good, but there's yeah, there's some fog on the horizon. Anyway, um, but anyway, but those are the kind of things we can pick up. This is going to go, and then the Tuesday, March fifth, is pretty much um, P and Z, and the mm -hmm. wetlands uh, zoning board appeals, um, building official fire marshal. So they all work. So that day we could come in earlier that day as well. If, if Tuesday, March 5th is easier because of what your schedule I can't in the morning. Yeah, no, I wouldn't be in the probably morning, but but everybody from those are here. And they're not there on Monday? No, they're Tuesdays and Thursdays. That's the uh, uh, fire marshal building yeah. officials. So they come in later. Building officials maybe in and help it, uh, but uh, Ty can, can talk to most of that. She's a little prepping all those things. Everything. And there's no real change to their budget per se. Well, it's a little bit true with the fire marshal. A little bit more, right? Because but that's he's, going, he's going high tech. Yeah. Right. And I thought, yeah. <laughs> exactly. like, I'm in the press. <laughs> well, we'll have, there's some things that we'll have to spot, yeah. He's been doing the job for a long time, Glenn. Some think he was here before fire. I mean, you know, before <laughs> fire. Stand, yes. Yeah, so before fire trucks and before fire. Yeah. He, yeah. He's always here. But again, he's here like usually three to four. So we can, okay. and he can make a schedule so that we can make that. Yeah. So I already talked to, to Ty on that, so we'll set that down. And that gives us a day or two after to finish up anything else we need and re repeat you know, again to bring yeah. people in if we want more, you know, to park and rec. We could, you know, even move them somewhere else if we needed to, but that does give us a couple of days. And then I leave on the 8th. So I, you know, I have to get that done. And as you heard last night, um, 17th, 18th, on the day of the 18th, we have to submit it to um, to the board or to the board of finance okay. for their. Um, you know, they're, they're putting it online for their meeting on the 20th. Yeah, they want the 17th for their 320 meeting. Right, which is the Sunday, but Bobby said, yeah, give it to me. She won't be able to do anything with it. So if we needed to, 
do something at the last minute, we could, we could do something. I'm back and not later the night on the 16th. So for some reason, we had to do something on the 17th. You shouldn't try to get it all exactly. Exactly. Before you're gone, then you can actually relax a little bit. Relax. It's going to be good with all We have everything. Anyway. But the, other, the other that. thing that came out of that meeting last night was that they yeah. want more. They want more information about the capital. Uh, plans in particular, they want to know from the departments how are you going to spend this money that you that's in the in the capital fund that has not been expended, right. and why hasn't it been expended? Right. They want a narrative from yeah. each department. Uh, yeah. So we'll, we'll be we'll get, we, I talked to some of them today, uh, explaining that it's it's really you know. Yeah, if they have uh, anything goes back a couple of years, anything really within the last two years or, or later or earlier, if they haven't done anything with it, there needs to be an explanation. We we kind of asked them, I asked the board of finance, I said, I do apologize for like, getting here on time. I don't think I'm something else, but anyway. And they're like looking at me going, okay, so you're <laughs> here to make the presentation. <laughs> I'm like, no. Nope. Right up to the top stairs, it's got a phone with a lawyer. And I'm thinking, I got to be there at 6 30, now they're up. Anyway, um, um, yeah, they, what they're asking for is literally, you know, you were given this uh, money through the capital plan. You had a intention to begin with. What's now? And, and we know that there are some issues, supply chain, COVID, but it's time to get, we're, we're kind of move out of it. We have to know what the issue is. If it can't be executed, then maybe it needs to go back. The town needs to reallocate because the town has to make that decision right. and go back. But we have an error. I think it's, it's a good plan. So it's good. Yes, yeah, so we'll, we'll get that program as well. So, um, but that's our, our budget thing so far. So we'll look at these dates and, and we'll hold it to March 6th and 7th in reserve. So probably we'll use one, maybe March 6th, we'll see. Yeah, uh, but, so, and then we'll, uh, we'll have it ready for us to go. So okay. is there anything we're still waiting on other than the, the, semi, uh, the uh, nursery school? Or uh, pretty much everything? Things. Why was that here? I have to go back over. There's a couple I, I know that were like, um, the paramedic, we did get that in, um, in the police protection. Um, we're going with Andrew's current salary. That's about what we can budget because right. there's potential for right. someone to fill that position. Could yeah. be less, could be more. It could be less, but yeah, so, well, I don't know if it could be more, but it's, it'll be, because yeah. yeah, it's pretty senior. Yeah, yeah. Senior right. But yeah, um, Board of Ed, of course, we don't have that. Board of Finance, we do have that. Uh, historic District Committee, uh, you know, we have a thing. Um, Kent Nursery Center, Cemetery Center, well, let's go. Uh, Kent Village Housing for the LV, Lake Warmock Authority, Lake Warmock, you know, you should, you haven't like, gotten mad at it. I've asked them to tell me why what's going on that. North is kind of reach of housing is another one. It's pretty much updated on the front. If you have the, uh, the 222, two, two, yeah. um, and that's, and then, you know, the rest of them are pretty much done. Some of our, our space holders, uh, like the nursing school and so on, and which uh, county dispatch, county dispatch came in yesterday. So there's a slight increase with that, but um, so I said I had to borrow it to include. So we will, our next meeting, we'll have updated. Okay. Uh, let's, we need to get that. We'll talk, we'll yes. talk about that tomorrow. We'll get that yes. tomorrow uh, when she comes in the afternoon. Is Northwest Connecticut Regional Housing, is that that new group that uh, Jocelyn Ayers is part of? No, that's the Lichfield County um, Housing Authority, or Lichfield County Housing uh, LC. It's a different group. Is that a grant or an association? Right. It's a different way. It's not the suggestion not that it's not the council. Anyway, regional housing council. Um, yeah. It's like it's new. 100, yeah. Well, well they never asked for anything, but they, I think the group's been around. But well, well, the first, this was the first year that. Right. The it, current it, year is the first year they got 100 bucks. Right. right. We haven't heard from me there. I think we'll, we'll track that book next week for sure. So, uh, do we ask the chore service to come and explain, oh, yeah, or do we just? I haven't. I, I try to look for any uh, narrative on that today. I couldn't find anything. Yeah, I read some mm -hmm. things about that. Yeah. So it's there. In there somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, we would. I uh, will definitely. Want to know why? Let's get from Mars at this point. Yeah, but we'll update that. Yeah. I guess my only question is: Can we have 
I'm wondering, I don't want the meetings to go on forever, but I wonder if rather than having so many meetings, if can we consolidate any of them or we're stuck with that many? Well, some, yeah. well some of them are who's available and, and there's some health issues with a couple of people that, so we tried to work that as the p and side. Um, a couple people in there and that, so we pushed that for that day so that everybody could be here at that time. Okay. Um, with all that P&Z and the wetlands, uh, the uh, building um, apartment, things like that. Um, there's other ones. Yeah, we could, we could, we have, you know, um, consolidate everything Thursday. I thought with the town clerk, she had an we'll intimation might want any uh, executive sessions. I don't know how long that would last. Um, and then, you know, we have uh, the board selected administrative assistant thing I want to talk to you all about. Um, and the library is, is not a change, but I think Sarah's wants to talk to us about it. And then board finance. We could, we could potentially put more on that one. We should forward. Yes. Tax assessor isn't here during that day. That's, He's there Monday and Tuesday. That's her big day. So uh, we want her to come in. She does have a uh, narrative, and I don't think she actually. Something about that. Oh, there's a February 28th. Okay, we can blow that out. I mean, I can push that to other things. Mm -hmm. that... Want to do that? Otherwise, I, I got three things on my calendar right now. Okay. Okay. Can you... I mean, I. Um, yeah, nothing on my calendar for March first. <laughs> yeah, well, we do that Friday, March first, so we can we can uh, can see if if there's anything coming. Yeah. I know she wanted to be here with her board chair, and that was a day that okay. she could be here. We we tried to get her earlier, and she had to. I mean, I could out. I could not work that day, and I could go yeah. early. You know how early you can on Thursday? Uh, Thursday. It's uh, Thursday. Uh, Thursday. Three thirty. Yes. Okay. Friday, Friday, I can do three. Friday. Are you able to three. make the three? Um, Zoom in or anything? Or is that, are you all moving out at the first mm -hmm. or the Friday or Thursday? Thursday, I'm like busy from four until five. That's pretty <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, um, um, we can move that. I think we can move Thursday is the 29th round. We can move Thursday to the Friday. We can see what we might move it Friday. I think we are. Um, yeah. And I'm happy to go earlier on Friday if that works for people. So. Okay. Three thirty is the earliest I could do. On Friday. On a Friday. That's your. Yes, it's last day, right? That's before you go on break, right? Yeah. Well, the other thing is, uh, I know you said you had stuff going on on March fourth, but maybe we can March do that. 50. Yeah, we can. Right, we can move. Oh. We can move. I think board clerk in or town clerk, excuse me, into Monday. Um, potentially, earlier. administrative assistant. Yeah, we could do that. We could see if we could put that in, and then uh, yeah, and then uh, move the thing for. Uh, for Maureen later on, yes, yeah. okay. Okay. Do that. And then I think we can get all the all this in, and we us to see what the library can do. If we just take another day, maybe Friday. If we're okay Friday, right? I'm, I'm okay. fine on Friday. 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 Okay. We can bring the guests here if it's possible that they come in Friday. Call out on that. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll worry about the, the Thursday. We have more time. So we have Tuesday, and then we have Wednesday. Wednesday's going to be a lot going on for regular meeting. Okay. okay. Any more on the budget? Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, that's done. We'll move to public comment. Anyone here? Well, anybody? Public comment across the field? I have a comment or a oh, question. Right. Okay, if nobody else does. Hi. Um, these are um, just some things I think maybe need to be asked um, of the park and rec director uh, for that new position. Um, one of the questions that I had in my mind was how many kids have actually outgrown the current programs that are currently in place and how many ki new kids are coming in to take their place? Um, you know, I mean, if you're not going to get the kids that need to come in there, then you definitely don't need another full time person. Um, so the, the new director was hired with a list of responsibilities. Some of those responsibilities will be going to the proposed new full-time person. And so you hired him, um, at a certain salary based on those job descriptions. And now all of a sudden, some of those job descriptions are going away and they're going to be filtered down to the new person. How is that going to be handled as far as the salary is concerned? Um, I'd like to know how many towns that are similar to ours have either a full-time park and rec director 
or have two full-time directors in their park and rec department. Um, he said that, uh, I guess the question is, um, what is the ta what is his plan? Is he planning on opening up any of these programs to outside of Kent um, children? Um, and so does that now make it a revenue making program? And if that's something that was said that you didn't want was a revenue making program. Um, so how does that fit in? Um, you know, you're, you're looking at adding um, another position that's going to be 58. By the time you get the benefits in there, you're talking close to $80,000. But you, but you currently have people whose salaries need to be brought up to speed. You said that yourself at the last meeting. Um, you also have um, part-time uh, you have uh, a part-time position open at the transfer station that still hasn't been filled because of the salary. And when one person is not there, then it's usually a union person that goes in to help Rick and fill in. And so now you're paying $40 an hour for that position. Um, you have uh, Barbara's um, assistant that has is open, has been open for a very long period of time. Um, so that's gonna be another hit to the budget. Um, and you also had a major reval that was just done. And when people got the notifications that their taxes were going to be going up, how, how can you justify adding almost $100,000 to the budget when you don't know what your mill rate is going to be and how people are going to be affected um, with regard to a new tax bill that's, that's going to be sent in the mail um, on July 1st? So. Um, those were just some of the things that that I thought of. Um, you know, you you also have a a new director who might be able to. You, you don't know what his strengths and weaknesses are at this point in time because he's new. He might be able to do what he needs to do. He might be. You don't know what his work. I, I'm not saying anything negative against him. I'm just saying you're working with an unknown entity at this point in time, um, and it might not be needed. Um, so those were just some of my things I think that you guys need to think about um, before you decide whether or not you're going to do this. And the town already voted it down once. So um, but that's it. Thank you for letting me share. Thanks for your comments. Yeah, no, no, no. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. So a few things, I wish Park and Rec was still here so I could address them with these questions rather than you guys. Um, the pictures were very quite disturbed by the pictures that they put in the presentation. They were old, there was a picture of the gates that were, all the gates were redone in 2020 or 2021 to brought up to code, we paid a lot of money for that. Um, the park, Emory Park, we know looks like crap in the spring or like in the late winter, early spring, because it's drained every year. The weeds grow in. We have Billy McCann or someone come in and clean it all up and make it all pretty again. And then we refill it. We just bought a brand new aerator for it before the lockdowns and everything. So um, as like, that's not a really true depiction. And as you said, some of the fields that were all overgrown, Jared did, and the building committee and whoever they hired did a great job at fixing those up. They look great, but that's that depiction makes it seem like that's what it's like now. And that's not true. Um, let's see, uh, as far as the salary lines, there's, when I look through it, cause I did this for many years with Park and Rec, so when I look through it, you could see that some of the numbers are off. The salary could definitely be tightened up. For instance, um, the ASP is only 2.75 hours. I know that 15 minutes is, you know, that adds up. Those are pennies and nickels. Um, you have some things that say, like the camp is eight hours a day. The camp is only open six hours a day. You don't need a director to be in there early because Club Getaway is doing everything. They're wonderful. They have everything all set up. There's not a lot of need like there was at Camp Ken at Emory Park to, um, you know, set up camp and everything. And Leslie did all of that with no problem and had, um, didn't have computer, you know, sign up and everything. It was all done through hand, handwriting. 
Um, also ASP, by the time you get done, it's not 180 days, it's 160 days. So I quickly saved $5,000 just by tightening that up. Um, so if they're saying the salary was 30,000, now we've got it down to 25,000 for part-time people, and as opposed to part-time and a full-time rate, 100,000. Actually, this the full-time person is gonna be 100,000 by the time like um, Joyce was saying, you have to put 40,000 in the budget because you don't know who you're gonna hire. You have to have 41,000 for their budget, for their salary, if it's salary or however that's happening. Um, you have another 10,000, 12,000 for their taxes. And you have whatever else is in there, the pension, blah, blah, blah. Um, Along with what I think what Donna was just saying is I really think we need to give Matt a chance. I don't think it's fair to have the new guy come in. And I won't go further than that and how he's being trained or how the previous person was trained. But we need to give him a chance and see what he can do, what he's capable of, capable of what his strengths and weaknesses are, and see if he actually needs to fill in. Because as we know, the director that just left us was doing things way outside of his job description. So the food service is, in, you know, a few years ago, we all know this, I've said this before, the Park and Rec Commission was tasked with going over the director's job description and tightening that up. And we did that. So one of the main things we took out besides just tight, like tightening it up was pulling out the food service because it's not a recreational activity. Um, and at the same time, Leah, who was the social services director at the time, was asking for a part-time assistant. So she made up her job description, then Park and Rec did their director job description redo, took the food service out and put it into the social services new person's job description. So, that took up a lot of the director's hours. And so that shouldn't even be counted. Um, that, you know, he'll have, the new guy should have that time. So I don't know how many hours a week that was. Um, they did a few different things. Um, I'd still like to know the status of the bingo games and the paperwork that's supposed to be done on that. I've never received that. Um, the, the director was also coaching, which is not part of his job description. Um, so all this stuff was taken things away from things that are in his job description that were being neglected. So, and just a little background, a little history on, on Park and Rec Commission is that a town may, was allowed through the state to make up a Park and Rec Commission. That was done many years. I don't even know how many years ago. I don't know if you know how many years ago, 30, 35, maybe, I don't know. It was run by volunteers as it is now. But they're responsible for park and rec. The town and the town's people allowed park and rec department commission through time to hire somebody. That person ended up being our first director. She was hired part-time on the basis that she did the office work while everybody else did the exterior, you know, the front of the house, so to speak. Then through time, that was changed to a full-time position. And the food service was a stipend that was added at one point. And that stipend got turned into just part of their regular salary. So the commission is responsible for the director. The commission is responsible for the programs. The commission needs to approve anything that their director does. They, he, the director is an employee of the commission, of the town, but the commission, as Ty is an employee of the PNZ. They direct her on what to do. Park and Rec should direct their director on what to do. I don't even know if director is the right term because again, it's their responsibility to get things done. If they put, have a director to put this on, good for them. But if there's things that can't get done, it's on Park and Rec Commission. And I don't see anybody besides one person on that commission that really goes out and does much more. You and Rufus have, because you've had to step up and fill the empty spaces, which I did for eight months. And so I know how difficult it was. And I did it by myself 
with no help from the commission, except a lot of aggravation from them. Um, so when Rufus said, or somebody asked, you know, when we were talking before about when, the, when somebody gets sick or something, yes, it's the chairman's job to go do that because it was his job originally, they were just able to hire somebody to take over those duties, but it's still their responsibility. You know, I just, I don't know where that failed. I don't know where the commission is not going out to help do these projects anymore. They're hardly ever at any place. They want to hire somebody or one of their eight or nine employees that they already have to go and sit at a, an event, which I don't even know what that means. Um, that's something brand new that Jared brought up. So, um, I'd also like to see the special funds that Park and Rec has and see them basically closed out because they are not needed. They were being used for the wrong reason. So basically, like I said, the commission needs to step up. I explained the food service. Um, Glenn, this one's to you. Jared did not need more space. And I won't, this is Jared, not just the director. He had a whole closet over in the community house that when he first came in, unbeknownst to the commission, we were never told until afterwards, they went over and he brought everything, well, first him and one of the commissioners went over and cleaned it out fine. But what we weren't told about was him moving completely out of there and moving everything into the big office and kicking these guys out and making them go to the... Oh, we weren't kicked out. Well, there was not, there was no reason for all that stuff. Pardon me if I said it wrong, but... There was no reason for all that stuff out of that closet to come to this office and make a mess and just, it, it looked terrible in there. It was disgusting and things were all over. It was unkept. It was not an office. I know there was things out in the hallways, there's things up in the attic, there's whatever. And we had perfectly fine space for it all. Um, the only other thing I'm gonna say is the capital stuff. Um, when we come to that, I would like to be able to speak to that on that money that is still in Park and Rec because I'm basically one of the only people that was there when the money was put in and why. So, and why it's not used yet. That's kind of obvious. I'll tell you quickly that it was put in for the pool. It was put in, um, whatever it was in 2000, I don't remember when we put it in, but anticipating that the pool would need funds and need repairs at that time, regardless. We didn't know what the repairs would be, would, would be. We were just trying to think ahead and be prepared if the pool needed repairs. So then when the money was about ready, guess what? The pool needed a repair. It had a crack in the bottom because it wasn't taken care of properly. So that was around the, um, then we had the lockdowns and then we hired Jared. And again, without permission or talking to the commission at all, went over our heads to Torrington Area Health. Did not tell the commission anything about this. Met Kathy down at Torrington, down at Emory Park and made decisions without any information coming from the commission or to the commission, from the commission, anything. We didn't know about it until afterwards. And he said, oh, by the way, I met Kathy over at Emory Park and this is what she said was wrong. Well, two out of those, two out of the four things that she said were wrong, were not wrong. They were already fixed. I don't know what the issue was. I was never able to talk to Kathy about it. So there's a lot of things going on that need to be addressed and that aren't getting out. The information is not getting out there properly. There's a lot of guessing. There's a lot of wrong information. There's a lot of um, untold history that's not being mentioned. It's getting a bit ridiculous. Thanks for your comments. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, public comment? Okay. Seeing none, we move to our last item, which is um, adjournment. A motion for adjournment. So moved. Yeah. All right. Aye. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Adjournment at uh, 534. Thank you. Everybody.